Okay, this is Dr. Mitchell again, and we're going to walk through how to do a Mann-Whitney test, a non-parametric test for independent groups using JASP. And so I have my two groups of data here. Uh, we have a group A and a group B. So these are separate groups, separate subjects in these groups. Uh, and as you notice, you look at the data, it only takes you a second to realize, wow, these don't look like, th this is not scaled data. There's, there's a lot of it's not really well distributed. It's not a normal bell curve. And we could graph this out and we'd see these aren't really bell curves here. Uh, there's a very few uh, possible values. And so we're going to say that this is ordinal data, non-parametric. And so we're going to do a Mann-Whitney test to compare these groups. Now, if it was parametric data, uh, if these were actual, you know, uh, infinite type of values, we would use an independent t-test. But we're going to use our Mann-Whitney. But... We do need to reformat this for JASP to be able to analyze this. So the way we're going to do that, and I left a couple columns here to do this, is I'm going to separate my, uh, my identifiers. And so the first identifier is what group you're in, right? You're either in group A or group B. So I'm just going to put group right there. And my subjects will either be in group A or they'll be in group B. And then my other value here, my dependent variable is score. Right. So literally, I have independent variable group you in, dependent variable score. Um, so uh, at this point, I'm just going to copy and paste these values. I'm going to copy my group A scores into there. I'm going to copy my group B scores. I'll put them down there. Now I need to give these labels, right? Makes sense. So I'm just going to put group A there. Uh, a little tricky, just highlight that down, and that'll copy it. I'm going to put B right there. And we'll highlight this down as well. And that will go there. And then I'm going to go back and just clean up my data. I'm going to get rid of these columns here because JAS doesn't want to analyze that. Uh, save this is a CSV file. So I'm going to go to File, uh, Save As. I'm going to just save this to my desktop here real quick. Uh, we're calling it NWU CSV. And we're good to go. Okay. So now I'm going to open JASP. And so this is my JASP software right here. And then I'm going to go into open, open. Now, I can go to my computer or I happen to have it in recent files. So I'm just going to go to recent files here. But you can find it on the computer. Um, and then at this point, we can do this just like we do an independent t-test. So I'm going to go to t-tests, independent samples. Now, I know you're saying, well, hey, wait, this is non-parametric data. You can't do a t-test. Well, you'll see in a second what we want to do, we can do here. So we're going to start with our variables. Our, let's start with our grouping variable. In other words, what are our groups? Well, I made this easy. I called that variable group. So I'm going to put that in my grouping variable. And then my variable, or my, my, what I want to measure here is score. So we're going to move score into there. And immediately you'll notice on the right, it is going to give us, if this were a regular t-test, a p-value. This p-value is 0 0.003, and that would be statistically significant. But again, this is not uh, scale data. This is ordinal data, and so we need to do a Mann-Whitney. So if you go over to the left here, you'll notice we can click Mann-Whitney, and it'll now give us a p-value for a Mann-Whitney. Now, it just so happens for this data, the p-value is the same. And it will tell you that does occur occasionally. Um, T-test Mann-Whitney values for some data sets, depending on the distribution of the data, depending on... Um, the sample size, you may have some different p-values. We can also look at effect size here. We can look at a Cohen's D that gives us effect size, uh, which is helpful. Uh, we can do some plots if we want. We can do some descriptive plots. This is very similar to what we've done in previous classes. So this is not anything new. There's our error bars, nice pretty graph. And like always, we can copy this. If we want to copy my um, table here, I can just go to copy and then I can copy this and put it in whatever document or file or whatever I want and clean that up. So uh, that's how we do a Mann-Whitney test in JASP. Hope that helped and we will see you in the next video.